fire, what are you saying? It's up, Jai, fire key. Say. We are here again, Ballhead and the Dread. Um, if you are interested, make sure you check out the Garvey TV shirt. We only ordered a limited amount. So uh, once it's gone, it's gone. All right. Fire, what are we talking about today? Yeah, we're talking about a whole barrage of things piling on one as it relates to Jamaica. Cause currently, based on with the, with the current curfews I mean, in Jamaica, I said I want to see that Jamaica become a police state. And we want to also talk about the implications of Jamaica being Americanized. So, <laughs> Jamaica being a police state, this one seems like a, a tricky topic. <clears throat> well, for those who are unaware, Jamaica has recently been, and I just want to make sure I have the dates correctly and correct me if I'm wrong. Jamaica's uh, on lockdown again, right? And I believe the lockdown's from Saturday at like seven or something to Wednesday. Basically from Saturday night to Wednesday morning. To Wednesday morning, yeah. So that's basically Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You, you're not supposed to leave your house. Yeah, and and then what the funny part when you're not leaving your house now is that they're not taking into account the culture. Yeah, Jamaica have a culture where flat, flat, that, flat fire. That's what you're talking Here's a flat photo slim culture where, 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 where the shop shop them are the thing them will run, especially amongst ghetto people. Ghetto people can buy grocery in a long term sense, you know. So they have to dip and hustle in day to day so they can go get money. We go buy food for eat from a shop. And that's why the shop culture is so popular and prevalent in Jamaica. But when they do them things, yeah, all right, so the government in Jamaica now, it's not a solution-based government, you know. And that is one of the main reasons them. So you see, anything happen, them have just one ch- tactic and one strategy for just deploy the police. Now, if you make the police have effectiveness, you know, because in Jamaica, so Jamaica does deploy police, randomly so that that simply means that this is the placeholder and with them deploying the police them things that will be the solution because if you have a bunch of people lock up in a them house and them can't move guess what got when them can't start move now it's going to be chaos and it's not going to have no farm or order because you don't give them no direction and mind meanwhile them locked down there is no incentive given to the people them if they carry out things in this particular manner so all in all, when you check it out, it's just going to come to a boiling point and then things are going to just get worse and you have to continue to do that. And so comes you're going to enforce your whole authoritarian type of, type of um, direction from the people. In. It's definitely reactionary, right? But I've always had a history of that. But what I find, um, I just want to give people context that are underwear, right? <clears throat> they locked down the country in the hopes of... Um, controlling the spread of COVID, right? A lot of people down there are dying of COVID. So it is what it is. But the tactic or the way they went about it, in my view, actually leads to the increase of COVID because uh, I spoke to numerous people on Friday and everybody said the same thing, fire. They're on the road trying to go to the market. Remember though, that's the population that can actually go to the market. (laughs) Who want to clarify, which is not the majority of Jamaicans now, right? The thing that I find disturbing is, and I'm not saying um, America's any better. There was some relief that they sent out. It's not that much. It's not really that beneficial. I guess people get unemployment. So I'm talking about the relief they sent out. But what I found kind of cold in Jamaica, and it's, it's a, the characteristic of the Jamaican government, that the citizens, as you stated before, that deal with the day-to-day buying and selling for survival, right, that need to be out running around. If I did not get no assistance, it's cold. If I did not get no, that's why I'm just saying it's cold because, all right, if a man, if you know a man, like he cannot get to third, from Wednesday, he can't really get to Thursday. It's really Thursday morning, maybe Thursday evening, he's going to get the food to eat for Thursday evening, right? In our reality. How are you going to deny this person Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? These are people that want to work, that go out and work and hustle. The ability to earn a living for themselves so they can eat without giving them any assistance. That's what I was really thinking about. I was like, man, it's kind of cool because people, as you said, that go to the market to do their thing or do whatever, sell the donuts, do whatever they're doing. There's nothing to do for those days and there's no assistance from the government. So that's the part I thought that was kind of backwards to even start. Before we even get to COVID fire, <laughs> like, I thought that was extremely, like, disturbing because if majority of a country survives like that which is true would you say the majority or no i would have said the majority is because 
even people who can't afford it to a certain extent, probably them can't afford food, but them can't afford something else. So it end up start trickle down in other way there and you succumb yeah. to your start. So the connection now where them are gonna need for you have a day-to-day movement to make things start happen. But what me find what me find with the Jamaican government now. Cause I soon get to the people them like I'm a real fire for bone from the people them way it will lead towards the situation because the people them need to, need to learn and this is gonna make them learn really and truly. See what I find with, with the government is that so because them not really have an effective strategy as mentioned before, them always look to the so-called first world nation, take things with them see the first world nation do but them don't apply it accurately or within the same, same mannerism. And that's the thing with me find out. So you see, if a first world nation is alright, we're going to set a curfew for a, for a particular minimum amount of time and there is more strategy in it because you have people who are speak up and some people who are request this and you have to make sure as a government they're going to put it under fire. See? Them now come and come now and do this because them know so much and the people them as much as them claim because Jamaica them like claim we're rebellious people and all of this thing, but them know so they're rebellious amongst themselves and rebellious when it comes to fighting against themselves because you see if the people them they're truly rebellious against a system them would have never met them type of thing happen so the government know all of these things so them just start work with it the way they because remember say one time politicians generally when them put you in a lockdown now like this you know it only make you become more dependent on them in the long run you know because you can't fend for yourself and they know that too so them them thing yeah, add towards them them whole political strategy you know but the people them now see the way that them are friends now you know but you see after this this the, them them get through them type of period yeah the, oh, I, I know so the, the weird the weird part about all of this is that it's not so enough for the people them are cry but the curfew them fee because them them under a police state or authoritarian rule. You know? The weird part about it from the people perspective is that the people them are crying because them can't get for party. So you see, with the mindset of the people them there, the mindset of the people them so low that the man and get to carry out them authoritarianism even more and uh, more fluently the way that because even the people them now rebel 100 percent of them supposed to rebel. <laughs> Yeah, and that's just a reflection of society. But I want to go back to what you said in regards to, um, like, Americanization. Uh, <laughs> a lot of times, I don't think it's uh, replicating what other countries do. I think it's more being told what other countries do. Like, you would have to implement this the proper thing, but they don't have the um, manpower nor the, I don't know what you want to call it, man, whatever, to actually implement it. Or they don't want to implement it anyway. I think that just the thing the conversation we have is like a lot of this stuff really demonstrates how people just generally don't care about the citizens of the country. I think that's what just we need to talk about, right? Because um, whether it's, I found it disturbing because <clears throat> I was talking to my mother and she was telling me that the, uh, I don't know if it was about two weeks ago, but she, she was telling me that the cruise ships are coming back, right? Now, this is the same day she, that she told me, telling me that they keep releasing different uh, news that the uh, deaths are increasing. So I'm just thinking that if deaths are increasing in your country, why are you allowing cruise ships to come to your country? And this was uh, this was a week after Dream Weekend. Like I was shocked. I was I was really shocked that they had Dream Weekend, and I was shocked at his response to the questions um, Holness said in regards to Dreams Weekend. So it's just like if I had Dream Weekend, like just like a borderline. PG-13 orgy uh, at, the, at the end of the day. People crowding is just whatever. So, like, how do you think they had the thing at Rick's Cafe one time, right? How do you think that people are going to congregate in this environment and no one's going to spread anything? Yeah, but at the same, it's not nothing new with this government to do because this government has always been a partisan government. Whether it want to be PNP or it want to be JLP. Them always, them always been a partisan government where you have the high society can always get to with certain things. Because see the thing we are talking about going to Rick's Cafe, yes, so it's surrounded by tourism. Dream Weekend is surrounded by tourism. The cruise ship is surrounded by tourism. So it's always a government who sell out. See, man, until I say at the first world, at the first world connect, them I try, them I try get tap into, you know, the government in particular that is, you know. Because you know, so them, them are them are the man, but just a call the shots in enough man at the third in the first so-called first world scene. 
And these guys kiss ass government, you know, I tell you, tell them to straight, you know, Andrew Oldness, or if you want to think about, about Golden from, 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 from the PNP, you know, any one of them, it's just a kiss ass government, you know, who always emotional when time you affect for them whole, for them whole thought process. And if you ever oppose for them thought process, then become emotional. And we know in ourselves that they not defend the average person. And violence See, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Then I'm I tell you, very them full of violence, see me, but the people them, that's what I tell you, I said, it, 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 call, it almost borderline crazy when you think about it fire because how can a nation solely depend upon tourism to survive? If you depend upon outsiders, your inside system survive fire, it, um, it, it, it becomes so ludicrous that it not even... It not even start add up fire because well, fire. Them... <laughs> well, fire the breacher in France for now and have a book, right? Richard of the Earth. I don't know Earth, if it's in Richard yes. in the Earth or the um was it black skin, white face, or white face, black skin, whichever the one that is. Black mass. Black mass. mass. But he has a section where he speaks about the purpose of these um colonial nations, right? And he specifically speaks about tourism. And I think that a lot of people lose sight of the origins of these countries. The origin of it was just to grow crops to sell in Europe. It was never meant to be like some independent country or some flourishing country with all these uh, industries. It was meant to be exploited by the mother country and it still exists today. And uh, there's a section where he speaks about tourism in regards to, you know, people in Europe just wanted some beautiful place to go and that type of vibe, you know, um, they, that place would provide, when it provide the indigenous cuisine, it will provide the cuisine of the mother country. Uh, the workers would speak the language of the mother country. And that's what you really have in Jamaica because nobody not really speaking Patois when they're working at the hotel. And no one's, yes, they do have this, the food. And even the food that they have is a watered down version, not as spicy, not as much seasoning. But they always have that continental dish to cater to that crowd. So when a person goes, <laughs> I'm saying all this to say is that <clears throat> the origin of these countries we're never meant to be a, a, a country to function independently. Because if you think about it, Jamaica didn't fight for independence fight. It was just granted, right? Then the whole vibe is like, even if, say you had a job and you're a managerial position and you're supposed to go to the next position, there has to be some form of training before you get into that position. I just can't put you in that position to leave. They just give a country independence, right? And they just leave. And they take a lot of the trade, the trade links. That's the cold part people don't understand that part a lot of the trade links that they had while they were under colonial rule they actually lost when it became independent so the man get to that trip yeah so it's, i just think that we need to keep a focus on the purpose of the country a lot of times it's this frustration in regards to what the country should be but it's really neo-colonialism and we're not we're not looking at these things from that perspective we're looking at it from it's a failing country, but it's just a, a this is just a neo-colonial. <laughs> that is what we're dealing with right now, right? We still are dealing with colonialism, but neo-colonialism. Yeah, col- a colonialism to the core in a fire because if you think about it, the the the, the man them economical economics tactic. The man them not have a tactic economically. And if you think about it, today, think about us demand and supply supply. You know? Jamaica don't have a have a set demand and supply root for ever benefit the people them in it more benefit the masters them where them are serving like one thing with me you know that's an example more than one example like it clear you have gas jamaica disrupt them connection with venezuela because they want to serve the interests of the united states of america see that's a one thing in you know? a gas where the people them use every day to day and them travels you know them disrupt the whole flow Forget higher gas prices just because they want to keep them connects with the US. See, them subsidize the incoming goods, them, the goods them were imported from, from America again. Because America come like Jamaica new master. And I mean, one of America ain't gonna fight for, fight for rule Jamaica and that is whole near colonialism rule. The See? Of fire, they've been the master for a while now, fire. They've been yeah, the master for a while, yeah. Yeah. Was it with NAFTA and all those things? Yeah, even before that, because even before enough to right, me. check this right. All right, see what all the produce now. All right, before I even say that, I want to clarify this is the next thing we need to focus on. When we speak about uh, these people, right? I don't think we should refer to them as Jamaicans, I think we should refer to them as representatives of some colonial power because their decisions are only made in their interests. 
So it's like really, they're really pimping the country when you think about it. Hey, I have a resource here. All right, cool. Take it. Just give me 20%. Oh, you want this over here? No problem. Just give me 10% off of that. Oh, you want that over there? So it's all about them because if you look into it, all these politicians have all these estates, both in Jamaica and abroad. Where are you generating this money from? It's not through business. Can no man show you, say, you have a business and it's, it's generating this amount of money. So it's just transaction and sell, literally selling off the country. Yeah, when we have someone, because I know the highway, on. I know for a fact the highway. The, the thing I never understood from a young age, you know that great um, documentary, Life and Debt? You want to, man? All right. It's by Stephanie Block. All right. Fine. I got to, we got to reach out to her too for a reason. Anyone uh, listening, we recommend that you check out this document called Life and Debt. They do a tremendous job of breaking down um, the economic situation in Jamaica, neocolonialism and the whole vibe, right? You have an next documentary to it, where, where, where people tell to us the Jamaican economy and telling them what the whole totalitarian rule of Jamaican government to one called Jamaica taken from the poor and sold to the rich. <laughs> and the concept, the concept is really for sure you say, you know, them not really give a damn about poor people in the fire. But you see, the thing we, we fuel them is that them have a, I, I'm going to tell you this, when it comes to politics in Jamaica, them are the, some of the most skilled politicians. Them, as much as I see them on a small scale compa- compared to the so-called first world nations. You know why them skill? Them man to know how to rule the person who is on the low, 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 low ranking on the economic ladder and, and control them brain because check levels in the fire. Every single garrison in Jamaica of a strong political affiliation. And all of these garrisons were shot a fire. Look at West Kingston fire. Where Edward Siago lit down back a wall. Run with no for the rest of them. And found him farm him own garrison. The man found his own garrison. His own garrison for support him whole thing, you know. And all of these places never rise up out of poverty yet, you know. But yet still, these places you could never, ever, ever, ever think about for, for them um, party coming out of power because you know why they're not coming out of power because the people them remain loyal towards these political affiliations you know jamaica one of the only countries them in the world where you can hear a person tell us oh me a born pnp or me a born jlp and ask them why because my mother and father was jlp so they have a family connection towards these political parties that simply means that the same exact sufferer who are being oppressed by these same politicians who don't have the interest for the country in mind, still controlling the minds of the same oppressed people, them who are not rebelling at all. And it's that, I know it's happening in a whole heap of different countries, you know. But you know why it's unique in this particular region? It's unique for various reasons, fire. Like, one of the main reasons why it's unique is that because these people, them, these people are known to have some of the most rebellious spirit across the world. See, the culture, this is one of the strongest cultures in the world. And that nobody can really argue that Jamaica is one of the strongest cultures in the world. But even the culture itself is, 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 is like, it's like the culture gets shoved out directly you know, from the politician them. And then we check it out. Now the same people them, who have this particular culture, where the politician don't highlight, the politicians stray away from the same people them support these part, these part, politicians to come back and oppress them over and over again. So it's like a love hate relationship, and the people them keep on a fuel it, and that make it so unique in a, in a, in a the manner. Yeah. In the fire, you know, I um, all right, two things I want to say. One, I think we need to stop being shocked that politicians not caring about people fire no 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 me, me no man no, like me can't shock him no not you <laughs> i'm just saying like you know i hear yeah. it all the time but like i think people should stop being shot like they don't care about the people fight it has nothing to do with people they could care less like just keep that because people don't keep saying that, like, a politician yeah. to do what they don't do yeah so <laughs> the thing i want to say though in regards to um the rebellious nature of jamaica right and we just reasoning i remember i was reasoning all right it's two things i want to say let me jump back and sorry for bouncing around. But one, I was reasoning with Josie Wells one time, right? Dance Hall legend and, you know, he used to deal with a thing back in the day. And I was asking him, actually, I'll put the link here. I remember I was asking him about the politics thing, right? And I was just asking him like, Fire, how were you doing that for so long, but you weren't making any money? Like you didn't see the correlation, like people really dying and you really weren't getting in any money from that. 
And he was just saying in hindsight, fire is just ignorance. And it's like your mind is warped and you don't want to accept the truth. Like you see it, but it's almost in your denial and you keep doing it. And I think that's what a, that's just a sickness people have on the whole and be in denial about the realities of the situation and what they're doing. And it becomes a toxic culture where you're expected to do something, even though you see it's pure foolishness. <clears throat> the next thing I want to say was um, in regards to the rebellious nature of Jamaicans. I spoke to numerous people and some people cuss me because they say Jamaican still fiery, but I think that's diluted fire. I think they're basing that off of something that happened in the past. And even within the past, a lot of times when they focus on the rebellious nature of Jamaicans, they're usually talking about Maroons, which is a small portion of the country. It's not the majority of the country. So like right now in Jamaica, like I remember my brother said this, right? He's like, he finds it odd that Buddha Brook is on the radio every day breaking down stuff and there has been no like crazy rebellion in the country because yes you can listen to it and drink and nod and say yo truth and real thing and, and and this and that and all that but it doesn't lead to any action so it's more like it's, it's almost like intellectual masturbation in a sense like but they yeah. like re they love reasoning the people in the love their reasoning need that <laughs> i'm not gonna agree with that i'm not gonna agree with that too not to let the truth in the fire. Some, like, some people love reasons. <laughs> no, no, some. For sure, for sure. Are the, are the, are the minority of Jamaica love reasoning. Let me tell you this fire. Majority of Jamaica hate reasoning. Majority of Jamaica pound span where them been told in the past. See, the people in Jamaica not have no rebellious spirit. Which rebellious spirit them at talk about? You can't have rebellious spirit and make. Let me tell you that. I'm not even talk about now. You can't have rebellious spirit. I make Walter Rodney them get banned from Jamaica. As much as you don't want to tell me something. And you can have a rebellious spirit. I make them same government. You yeah. follow right fire. You ever see, you ever see a political campaign and a political rally at Jamaica? And make and me, the man them I buy them all KFC and, and party and them things. If you go, if you go, go for a rally and want to go back in, you not even have part for put on fire. I'm going to tell them this. The people them only rebellious against themselves. And ah. the people them. And you see, with them being rebellious against themselves, them bowling at that. No Jamaican difference from people. black Americans, fine. No difference from black Americans. Jamaican people, them bowling and fighting against themselves, you know. Because if you realize it in a fire, them have more strength in fighting against themselves than them have strength in fighting against the government. Because them never them not implicate the government for, for, for setting up policies and put nothing into play because of them and support the same government, them fire. Check levels in a fire. If you look on the progress where this government make over the so-called so independence of them at all, because there is if a man will fight for independence, that simply means that he's still a, he's still a puppet. The independence can't be gained to you. But from 1962, when them said them are for them so-called independence, where them get you, how much progress has they have, have they made as a country and a whole where them can say independently then, since we stand by the word, independently where you make without influence of the same colonial masters. There is none. Them can't tell me so they make one particular progress at all. Check levels now in a red. We well, do a thing about people and I even realize it related, it, it relatively, you know, check the level. I said, you them don't get killed off themselves and I fight against them one another. At the same American tactic, even this of the colonialism spreading, you know, because you hear, the, you hear the man in my tell you, say, the man in my talk at Jamaica with them, I tell you, say, yo, mama, chop. chap. Them a chap. I said, the gangster talk and street talk, you know. Chop, chop. All right. You know where them get that from? Them get that from the youth, them in America. That's why you them start calling this important. More everybody will watch this important. I want to hear it, but I don't know the story. You, know? you see the youth, them where I tell about them even trap music. They might the trap dance hall. You know what is a trap? And you know why them come up with the term? Because the term trap are coming, come off a trap. You, know? you see me, I say, because the same youth, them from Mobile, we get with influence and all of these things from all of the American things. You know? Trap in America is an end. You know? So it's when a young kid up for them corner. And I hold it in them corner, them call house. it a trap. More the house, the house, the house. It's a house type, yeah. Yes. House so I want to call it a trap. So I want to say, yo, where, where are you at? And a man say, I'm in the trap. Because I feel them code that for the thing now. So the man them take that and bring that in for them in the music. So not even the music now. I've, even the music colonialism spreading now, you know, because the man them put an American mindset even at the music and in them thought now, you know, when them did unique already, you know, them take with them uniqueness where I've for them African influence and culture to come something where more identifiable to them 
we have a piece of America in it because if it not have a piece of America in it, it not have no, no validation. All right, fire. We in the you same. See? We going on the same road right now because I was gonna bring up the music, which was mind boggling to me. Fire, right? And it's the ignorance that you have when you out of something and you're not near something. I was shocked at the amount of artists that burn in so much fire and so red, but they have no revolutionary actions in their personal life. I, it was pretty disturbing to me, you know, because I don't put my business out there with fire. You know, I deal with the thing on a level fire, right? So I was just because I remember speaking to artists now, right? And oh, how this person robbed them up and this person robbed them up and sucked this and sucked that and this and that. But fight, you never did nothing. You see that person every day, you smiling, shaking that man. We're not, we're not advocating for certain actions, but it's like, if I, if you out here saying this every day, if I, how is a man robbing you every day, taking money from your family? He just walked past him. He's just cool. It's not like all Leroy Sibbles and all clap, clap, uh, Cox and Dodd or something. They just, you know, stand up for yourself and fire where my money at. No, they just hiding, drinking, and cussing the man. So that alone show you the thing of joke, fire. Hey, this reggae thing of joke, yo. Let me tell everybody this, yo. Who fell away? Just deal with the message, yo. You'll be shocked if you go around some of these artists. Take the message and the music. Take the inspiration and leave it at that. Don't correlate the message with the artist. Because if you do, you will be disappointed. A lot of people have pretty words to put on people. But when it comes to them, fire, they ain't no fire. And they're not doing nothing to it. And they're very selfish, by the way, too. That's mind-boggling to me. All you do is talk about upliftment and togetherness. And they're extremely selfish and self-centered. Man, that man tell you, say, you can check it out the same way. That it kind of trickle down in the community, them too, because the people, them selfish and self-centered too, because... If you think about even how all the thing structure for the for the place even full of so much crime, you know. It uh, the, the people remember say, all right, Jamaica it, it have a tight have a tight knit culture, right? The culture is so tight knitted that certain things can't happen without the people them knowing, seen? And that the one thing we're included in that is the crime. See? So every crime will take place in Jamaica, the people them are aware of what on. So you see when the people them are aware of what go on now, politicians are aware also. Because the culture is a tight knitted culture from top to bottom. I must say tight knitted my mean say in, in the sense of where we call it now, the verbal communication. A news carrying culture. It's a news carrying culture. Because I mean, you haven't probably have to me that pretty top then. It's a news carrying culture. So you go to and fro, to and fro, and sometimes the news change. And but we always know them know what is the root of this particular news. So you see, with having a culture like this. Everybody is aware of what takes place, but the people them have a thing now where them so selfish that them start thinking about themselves. Because my mind, even at the do you etc. You know why I can't even sometimes I can't even look on them and say I expect them to do different than for support a stupid politician who not even have a direction. Because you know why the same people them support the gangsters them every single day, support gangster gangster culture, support gangster music. Support gangster, gangster ruling of them community where I've destroyed them all, them all mentality. But yet still, they might tell us that they want crime to stop. Well, let me hear you say, my 